This information cassette brings a personal report direct to you from a recent meeting of importance and interest. The occasion, the AM Turing Award and Lecture at the Annual Conference of the Association for Computing Machinery. Now Mr. Douglas McElroy introduces Professor Edsger Dijkstra. The nomination of Edsger W. Dijkstra for the Turing Award honors the prize no less than it does the man. Professor Dijkstra's contributions to the art of programming are many and enduring. Listen to the working vocabulary of programmers anywhere, and you'll find it studded with words originated or most forcefully promulgated by Dijkstra. Display, deadly embrace, semaphore, go-to-less programming, structured programming. What is imprint on programming is deeper and more pervasive than any catalog of jargon can possibly indicate. The precious gift we acknowledge today is nothing less than Dijkstra's style. His approach to programming as a high intellectual challenge. His eloquent insistence and practical demonstration that programs should be composed correctly, not just debugged into correctness. And his illuminating perception of problems at the foundations of program design. Like many early programmers, Dijkstra started in physics. He earned his Master of Science in Theoretical Physics at Leiden in 1956 then switched to computer science and took his PhD in mathematics at the Municipal University of Amsterdam. The next three years, he worked under Professor van Weingarten at the Mathematische Centrum, where he contributed to the design and implementation of Algol 60. Since 1962, he has held the post of Professor of Mathematics at the Technische Hochschule in Eindhoven. He has published about a dozen papers, both technical and reflective, among which are especially to be noted his philosophical addresses at IFIP, his already classic papers on cooperating sequential processes, and his memorable indictment of the go-to statement. He has also circulated an influential series of underground letters, which have recently surfaced as a polished monograph on the art of composing programs. Professor Dijkstra has been elected a fellow of the Royal Academy of Science in the Netherlands, and also to one of only two positions of distinguished fellow of the British Computer Society. We've come to value good programs in much the same way as we value good literature. And right at the center, of this literary movement, creating and reflecting patterns no less beautiful than they are useful, stands Edsger W. Dijkstra. It is my honor now, on behalf of the ACM, to present the AM Turing Award for his outstanding contributions to the art and science of programming to Professor Dijkstra. If I had to describe my feelings on this occasion, I would be reduced to speechlessness, so I shan't do it. I just say thank you, and by way of sign of gratitude, I will offer you a lecture. Thank you. As a result of a long sequence of coincidences, I entered the programming profession officially on the first spring morning of 1952. And as far as I have, I have been able to trace, I was the first Dutchman to do so in my country. In retrospect, the most amazing thing was the slowness with which, at least in my part of the world, the programming profession emerged. 
a slowness which is now hard to believe. But I'm grateful for two vivid recollections from that period that established that slowness beyond any doubt. After having programmed for some three years, I had a discussion with A. van Weingaarden, who was then my boss at the Mathematical Center in Amsterdam. A discussion for which I shall remain grateful to him as long as I live. The point was that I was supposed to study theoretical physics at the University of Leiden simultaneously. And as I found the two activities harder and harder to combine, I had to make up my mind either to stop programming and become a real respectable theoretical physicist, or to carry my study of physics to a formal completion only with a minimum of effort, and to become, yes, what? A programmer? <laughs> But was that a respectable profession? For after all, what was programming? Where was the sound body of knowledge that could support it as an intellectually respectable discipline? I remember quite vividly how I envied my hardware colleagues who, when asked about their professional competence, could at least point out that they knew everything about vacuum tubes and amplifiers and the rest. Whereas I felt that when faced with that question, I would stand empty-handed. Full of misgivings, I knocked on Van Wijngaarden's office door, asking him whether I could speak to him for a moment. When I left his office a number of hours later, I was another person. For after having listened to my problems patiently, he agreed that up till that moment, there wasn't much of programming discipline. But then he went on to explain quietly that automatic computers were here to stay. That we were just at the beginning, and couldn't I be one of the persons called to make programming a respectable discipline in the years to come? This was a turning point in my life, and I completed my study of physics formally as quickly as I could. One moral of the above story is, of course, that we must be very careful when we give advice to younger people. Sometimes they follow it. <laughs> Another two years later, in 1957, I married and Dutch marriage rights require you to state your profession, and I stated that I was a programmer. But the municipal authorities that of the town of Amsterdam didn't accept it on the ground that there was no such profession. <laughs> and believe it or not, but under the heading profession, my marriage act shows the ridiculous entry, theoretical physicist. <laughs> So much for the slowness with which I, was, I saw the programming profession emerge in my own country. Since then, I have seen more of the world, and it's my general impression that in other countries, apart from a possible shift of dates, the growth pattern has been very much the same. Let me try to capture the situation in those old days in a little bit more detail, in the hope of getting a better understanding of the situation today. While we pursue our analysis, we shall see how many common misunderstandings about the true nature of the programming task can be traced back to that now distant past. The first automatic electronic computers were all unique single copy machines, and they were all to be found in an environment with the exciting flavor of an experimental laboratory. Once the vision of the automatic computer was there, its realization was a tremendous challenge to the electronic technology then available. And one thing is certain, we cannot deny the courage of the groups that decided to try and build such a fantastic piece of equipment. For fantastic pieces of equipment they were. In retrospect, one can only wonder that those first machines worked at all at least sometimes. The overwhelming problem was to get and keep the machine in working order. The preoccupation with the physical aspects of automatic computing is still reflected in the names of the older scientific societies. What about the poor programmer? 